Number of factors that are supposed to be taken into consideration when a judge or magistrate is setting a bond. 23 years old, um, a time bomb. Police called the bond given to Welsh an opportunity to kill. He killed my sister. He killed my sister. They should never let him out of prison. Her, her ex, he had just got out. He was out on the tether torturing her, and they let him out of jail. This is the court's worst nightmare. Worst possible scenario that could happen in that a witness has been killed. On June 2nd, 2022, 23-year-old Jonathan Welch locked his girlfriend and the mother of his son, Zelaya Frazier, in the house and proceeded to hurt her tremendously, all because she wouldn't give him the password to her phone. Thankfully, Zelaya was able to escape him and run to get help. Jonathan was arrested and charged with seven crimes. But on July 8, 2022, Jonathan's mother posted his bail, and he was released to her care. Within two days of Jonathan getting out, Zlayaya, Jonathan's mother, and Jonathan's stepfather were dead. What events led up to that tragic day? And what did Jonathan's mom have to do with it? Let's find out in the story of Zlayaya Frazier, the young mom whose boyfriend murdered her after getting out of jail. Because he wasn't incarcerated, she is now dead, his father's now dead, his mother's in a hospital bed, and he's got a baby out there that will, in most likelihood, never see his father again. On June 2nd, 2022, at around 3 a.m., first responders were called to the 13,000 block of Cliborne Avenue in Harper Woods, Michigan. They were told that a man named Jonathan Millamont Welch had held his girlfriend and the mother of his child hostage and hurt her for hours. The girlfriend, Zlaya Frazier, had managed to escape to a neighbor's house when Jonathan took a break from hurting her. When the officers got there, what they saw was way worse than anything they could have imagined. Zlaya was badly injured, her arms and legs had been badly burnt, and she had been essayed by Jonathan. Emergency services did what they could for her at the scene before rushing her to the hospital to receive treatment. By the time officers got to the home Jonathan and Zlayaya shared, he was nowhere to be found. According to the neighbor, once he realized Zlayaya had fled to her house, he chased her there and kicked down the door, but when he heard the neighbor on the phone with the authorities, he backed out of the house, got into his car and drove off. Though Zlayaya was badly injured, she was still able to tell investigators who had come to talk to her what had happened. According to her, it all started with Jonathan asking her for the password to their phone. Zelaya told investigators that Jonathan had become very insecure recently and would demand for the password to her phone so he could go through it. This had caused a number of arguments and fights between them, because no matter how hard she tried to reassure him, she wasn't dating anyone but him. He was never convinced and always managed to start a fight. On that day, Zlaya told investigators that Jonathan had forced her to be intimate with him and then proceeded to demand for the password to her phone. She had become tired of the way he treated her, so she refused to give it to him. That's when the pain started. According to court records, Jonathan did a lot of inhumane things to Zlaya, including hitting her constantly with his belt, burning her arms and legs with a spatula, threatened her with a drill and poured gasoline on her body, he would take breaks when he got tired from inflicting pain on Zelaya and resume hurting her once he regained his strength. He held her hostage for hours. He was there. And when he got tired, he rested and beat some more. What he did, torture. He poured gasoline on her. He, he wanted to kill her. At some point after he poured the gasoline on her, he went into the kitchen, presumably to get a lighter to set her on fire. That's when Zlaia made a run for it. She was in the nude, but she didn't care. She knew Jonathan would end her life if she didn't get out at that moment. My sister was fully naked when she ran out the house and ran to a nearby neighbor, a nearby neighbor house to get help. She got up and ran out the door. Zelaya said Jonathan saw her running out the door and ran after her, but she was able to gain access to their neighbor's house before he caught up to her. At that time of the night, it was a miracle that the neighbor had been awake to hear the frantic knock on her door. Otherwise, 
Who knows what would have happened if Jonathan caught up to her before the neighbor opened her door. With a clear description of Jonathan, his car and places he could possibly be hiding, officers put out a bolo on his car, and within a few hours, he was caught and placed under arrest. He was quickly charged with first-degree harmful device use and possession causing injury, among several other charges. The extent of what Jonathan did to Zlaya shocked the whole community of Harper Woods. The fact that he took his time to inflict as much pain as he could, just because she wouldn't give up her password sent chills down everyone's spines. Jonathan was arraigned in court on June 12, 2022, and received a $100,000 bond with a GPS tether and was ordered to remain at his mother's house and not have any contact with Slaya. How low the bond was shocked, many folks felt like the bond was not proportionate to the horrific things he had done to Slaya. Amongst those who were not happy with the low amount of the bond was the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office, who released a statement saying they were not happy with the bond and would pursue a higher bond as soon as they can get proof of the horrific things he put Zlaya through to the judge. But before they could do that, Jonathan's mom posted his bail. If you're familiar with the American legal system, then you don't need to come up with the full amount of your bond. You only need to have 10% of it. 10% of a $100,000 is $10,000, which is not as hard to raise. Or at least it wasn't for Jonathan's mom. 10,000 is easy to come up with. It's people that, 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 that steal something from a store that would get more than 10,000. You twerk somebody, you say somebody, and you got out with paying $10,000. On July 8th, 2022, Jonathan Welch was released from jail into the custody of his mother. And unfortunately for Zlaya, her nightmare had just begun. Zlaya wanted the best for everybody. She was a true sweetheart. Zlaya Frazier was described as a kind-hearted, fun, and hardworking young woman. She was very ambitious and not only knew exactly what she wanted out of life, but how to get it. At the age of 22, she already had her own business that she started called Snobbish, a boutique where she sold clothing, shoes, purses, and accessories. She successfully ran that business whilst getting her college degree and modeling on the side, though it was not easy for her to balance both. Zlaya did her best to make sure that she thrived in both her business and her education. Zlaya wanted to be more than just a business owner. She also wanted to be a nurse. Her dream to become a nurse wasn't a big surprise for her family. Being one of seven children, Zalea loved to take care of people, and she knew how to make everyone in her life feel important. It was a skill she had always had, even when she was in high school. She was popular because of how kindly she treated people, how much attention she paid to people, and how much time she put into having genuine connections with people. And she was loved for it. She was so loved that she was on the homecoming court every year of high school at Warren's Lincoln High. One of seven siblings, Zalea knew how to make others feel important. She was on the homecoming court every year at Warren's Lincoln High. People were naturally drawn to her and her fun spirit made them want to spend as much time with her as possible. But there was another reason Zalea wanted to be a nurse. Out of her six siblings, one of her brothers had been diagnosed with cancer very early on in his life, and Zalea watched him battle to stay alive. She also had a sister who had cerebral palsy. She knew how important the right care was to people in those conditions, so she became determined to be a nurse, someone who provided the right care to people who were sick. Her mom, Trina Harris, says the 22-year-old was studying, inspired by her brother who fought cancer and her sister with cerebral palsy. That's why she wanted to become a nurse. Zlaya was said to be one of those people who just never seemed to run out of love to give to others. She could brighten any room she walked into. She was a beautiful woman with a beautiful soul, very courageous, very outgoing. Zlaya and Jonathan started dating when she was 16 years old, and he was 17. They had been high school sweethearts who were so in love that everyone thought they were going to spend the rest of their lives together. In October 2020, Zlaya and Jonathan celebrated their sixth year together. Zlaya celebrated that day with a special post on Facebook saying how no matter how tough it got between them, they never broke up. She said, we cried, we yelled, and we hated, but we never separated. 
October was a special month for Zlea and Jonathan because they not only celebrated their sixth anniversary, they also found out they were pregnant and having a boy. They were very excited to meet their son, and Jonathan didn't waste time stepping up to provide for his family. They bought a home, settled in, and got ready to welcome their baby. We have to carry on this greatness. We have our boy. He gotta be great. He gotta be great. He gotta be great. He got to. In March 2021, Zlaya and Jonathan welcomed their son into the world, and it seemed their love only grew. Zlaya was said to have been a great mom, who loved her baby so much. In fact, a lot of her Facebook posts were of him and how much she loved him. Loved her son. Like, she loved him so much. That was her world. I don't consider being a mother an easy task, and I don't call nothing that comes within motherhood a sacrifice. Did I take a risk with my life? Having you? Indeed. But I needed you. I needed to grow. I needed to look at life differently. I needed a bigger passion that life without you couldn't give me. I needed to learn how to love, honor, and respect thy man. Because of you, I tend to work on myself. Because of you, I became a better me. Mommy got you past life, and when I clock out, know that I will remain within you. I can't protect you from the evil world, but I can give you all the knowledge I've enhanced. Not only am I grinding through my 20s, I'm also building, and that's not a sacrifice. That's me giving you a life beyond life. Giving you a head start will always be my mission. Just keep mommy name alive, baby. You're the firstborn of greatness. Mommy and daddy building this empire for you. Just make us proud, baby boy. And always come to me no matter the situation because this shit past 18 years, I got you for life. But not long after they welcomed their bundle of joy, Zlaya and Jonathan's relationship took a turn for the worse. For some reason, Jonathan became very insecure. Zlaya had begun to post more on social media, and Jonathan did not like it. He mostly didn't like the comments that her post would generate. Comments from men complimenting her body, and her beauty triggered jealousy and insecurity in him. Although Zlaya couldn't control what people chose to comment on her page, Jonathan was never able to understand that, and he often accused Zlaya of wanting the attention men gave her. Now, Zlea was a very beautiful woman. No doubt she would have attracted attention everywhere she went, but Jonathan was more concerned with the attention she got online. He became obsessed with combing through her social media to find inappropriate comments men would leave her and then turn around and accuse her of cheating on him with the men who paid her such attention. Social media was important to Zlea because she wanted to be a fashion model and knew social media was a great way to get noticed by brands who might want to work with her. But Jonathan didn't get that. Eventually, his jealousy got worse, and he started demanding to go through her phone at random moments, hoping to catch her messaging some guy, though he never caught her. It never seemed to stop him from doing it again another time. But unfortunately, it didn't stop with constantly accusing her of cheating. The emotional blackmail soon turned physical, and before she knew it, Jonathan had begun to hit her. At first, it happened so few and far in between, and he was always apologetic about it afterwards, so she chose to forgive him. And no matter how often Zelaya told Jonathan he was the love of her life, and she was not interested in being with anyone other than him, it didn't work. Jonathan only got more jealous and insecure as time went by, and sadly on June 2nd, things got out of hand and Jonathan went too far. After Jonathan was arrested and hauled to jail, Zlaya felt free, more free than her family had seen her in a while. And some time before the tragic events of July 10th, 2022, Zlaya spent time with her family. The entire family got together to have dinner, enjoy music, and sing karaoke. It was a joyous day, as it often was, any time the Frasers gathered together, theirs was a close-knit family and they all loved each other. They took pictures and made videos of them having fun. In the videos, Zlaya looked so happy. According to her mother, Zlaya was happy because it was the start of a new chapter for her. She had finally gotten free of Jonathan's controlling and violent ways, and she was happy to start afresh with her son. And she was ready for her new beginning. 
because she was talking about the future a lot. That was an unbelievable day for the Frasers, made even more chilling by the fact that that was the last time they saw Zleia alive. One of the last videos I got with my sister, we did like a karaoke night. On July 10th, 2022, Zleia got a call from Jonathan's mom, inviting her over to their house. She told her she wanted to try and patch things up between them so she could be able to spend some time with her grandson. It seemed like an innocent enough request that Zelaya didn't read too much into it. Jonathan's mother had promised her that Jonathan would not be there and she just wanted to talk. Zelaya decided to honor the invitation and go. After all, she really did want her son to have a relationship with his dad's side of the family, despite whatever his dad did to her. Zelaya made her way to Jonathan's parents' house, hoping to make peace, not knowing the nightmare that awaited her within those walls. A few hours later, first responders were called to Jonathan's parents' house by a neighbor who said Jonathan's mom stumbled to her porch. She had been hurt badly. Well, I was in the process of getting ready to leave the house and my neighbor from across the street had stumbled into my doorway asking me to call 911. Well, demanding I call 911. When emergency services got to the scene, they found Jonathan's mom on the neighbor's porch. She had a knife in her back and she was drenched in a pool of red bodily fluids. They quickly rushed her to the hospitals as officers on the scene assessed the situation going on in Jonathan's parents' house. The first thing they did was speak to the neighbor who called 911. That's when they found out Jonathan was in the house and there might be possible hostages. And I originally thought she got jumped because of the blood on her and then upon further I noticed there was a knife in her back and when I asked her who did this eventually she was finally able to tell me her son did it and that he was everybody in the house. Officers quickly surrounded the house shouting for Jonathan to come out of the house but he refused. As officers tried to get Jonathan to come out neighbors saw Jonathan lowering his one-year-old son out of the window and on the grass outside the home. They alerted the officers who searched for the baby and later found him in the backyard of the home. Medical officials immediately transported the baby to a nearby hospital for treatment. After getting his son out of the house, Jonathan began to fire his weapon at the officers. When that didn't achieve the results he wanted, he proceeded to start a fire inside the home. Firefighters were called to the scene and did the best they could to stop the fire without gaining access to the home. The standoff between Jonathan and the officers lasted several hours. From around 8 p.m. on July 10th, Jonathan didn't surrender until the early hours of July 11th, when he walked out of the house with his hands up and was arrested by officers. The nightmare wasn't over, though. Officers discovered the shock of their lives when they finally gained entry into the home. They found the bodies of Zlaya Frazier and Robert Bray, Jr. Jonathan's stepdad. His mom at the time was in critical condition. According to court documents, Zelaya and Robert had both been unalived by blunt force trauma. Jonathan was charged with the murders of Zelaya and Robert. Jonathan was again arraigned to court except this time around. He was denied bond. The presiding judge of the 36th District Court Criminal Division called what happened a court's nightmare. This is the court's worst nightmare worst possible scenario that could happen and that a witness has been killed. He said, denying him bail came a little too late as Jonathan had already wreaked havoc on innocent people. And although it's far too little, far too late, the court is going to remand the defendant to the custody of the Lane County Jail. Police called the bond given to Welsh an opportunity to kill. The news of the tragic events of July 10th spread through Michigan like wildfire, and many folks were outraged that Jonathan was given such a low bond after committing heinous offenses. The judge who gave out the bond was heavily criticized, with many holding her responsible for Zlaya's death. A number of factors that are supposed to be taken into consideration when a judge or magistrate is setting a bond. 23 years old, 
um, a time bomb. And I'm not saying that the magistrate or judge could have predicted that, but with the charges and the nature of the charges, it should have been apparent that uh, society needed big protection. Law enforcement in Michigan were also vocal about the low bond Jonathan got the first time around considering the horrific things he had done. The chief of police called the low bond Jonathan was given an opportunity to kill. He was given a chance with bond at that time and took his freedom as an opportunity to finish the job and kill victim Frazier. People called out the magistrate that set the bond, demanding an explanation for her actions. The magistrate who set the bond has yet to respond. The chief judge has yet to respond. The prosecutor who was set to prosecute Jonathan on his previous charges did speak out, saying the bond was not appropriate for the offenses Jonathan had committed. As responded to us so far is Prosecutor Kim Worthy. She tells us tonight, quote, it is an understatement to say that it is exceedingly difficult to get appropriate bonds for violent felonies from some of the 36 district court magistrates. She went on to say, Magistrates are given a detailed report of the charges filed against the defendant before a decision on bond is made. Magistrates have reports available to them that detail alleged crimes in their files before a bond decision has to be made. So the question on a lot of people's minds was, if the magistrate knew the full details of what Jonathan had done to Zlaya on June 2nd, why did she set his bond so low? According to the prosecutor, they had planned to contest the bond amount in court at a later date once they had all their evidence together, but sadly, they never got the chance. On that was given to Mr. Welch for his alleged horrific crime was much higher than we usually get. So we were hopeful that after the presentation of the evidence at the preliminary examination, that would hopefully persuade a judge to actually increase the bond accordingly. It never got to that level, tragically never got to that preliminary examination. Now Welsh is being held, uh, a judge in Harper Woods holding him on no bond tonight. But that wasn't all. As the investigators and prosecutor were preparing for trial, sadly, Jonathan's mom, who had been in critical condition since the tragic events, passed away. Third victim of a tragic family attack in Harper Woods has died tonight. And the suspect is facing a slew of charges. The incident unfolded inside a home on Kenosha earlier this month, just days after the suspect was released on bond. This caused more outrage amongst the community, but for Zlaya's family, as much as they were heartbroken by Zlaya's passing, they focused on trying to create awareness so something like that would not repeat itself. Man was arraigned here at District Court in Harper Woods on the third murder he is accused of committing while out on bond. The loved ones of one of his victims are speaking out, hoping her story saves your life or the life of someone you know. It happened just two days after he got out on bond, accused in June of assault, criminal sexual conduct, home invasion, and the victim, Zalea. How do you let somebody out that, that did that to somebody? How do you let them out? Zalea's family reached out to the media. Their aim to get Zalea's story out there as much as possible. So other women who find themselves in the situation she was in would prioritize themselves and leave. They are speaking out, hoping judges take a more in-depth look at details of domestic violence cases before offering a low bond. They also hope to inspire domestic violence victims to leave sooner. I want women across the world to know that it's not love. It's not love. They urged women facing DV to not be afraid to seek the help they need to get out of the situation. Some people are afraid of being judged and everything, but your loved ones, they're not going to judge you. You know, we're here to help. Everyone's here to help. Everyone wish they could have helped my sister. Zlaya's family held the judge that set the bond responsible for Zlaya's passing and believed the justice system had let Zlaya down. Definitely broken. They should never let him out. They let him out of jail. And, not, and he killed my sister. He killed my sister. They should never let him out of prison. 22-year-old Zalea Frazier's mother is in tears as she faces what led to her daughter's murder. Her family is now frustrated with the 36th District Court Magistrate, Don White, who set the bond. They believed the magistrate's error in setting the bond so low cost Zalea her life. Her, her mistake cost my sister her life, and that hurts. Yeah. There's nothing that can bring my sister back. There's, there's nothing that somebody can say, no apology that's going to bring my sister back. That hurts. 
Zlaya's family also gathered together to honor Zlaya with a memorial. The community comes together tonight to honor a mother murdered this week in Harper Woods. Police say that 22-year-old mother died during a violent rampage on July 10th. Her boyfriend is the accused killer, and he was out on bond for trying to kill her just days before tonight. Many people gathered in Warren to remember her. Hundreds of family and friends gathered wearing her favorite color, purple, to celebrate the life Slaya lived. They are about 100 family and friends met here at Lincoln High School where Zalea attended just a few years ago and graduated. And tonight they were all wearing purple, her favorite color and reflecting on the life that she was just beginning. The turnout itself made me like emotional. My sister, just to see that she was this well loved and liked, man. It just mean a whole lot to me. There's many people coming. Hey, thanks for watching. Our deepest sympathies go to the family of Zelaya Frazier. What are your thoughts on this case? Do you know of other similar cases? Let me know in a comment. And before you go, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. See you next time and stay safe.